Yeah, no, you don't usually consider yourself a chord player, and I know, I mean, from what I just heard, certainly it's it's melody driven. You know, I can hear the the singing quality always, and you had some chordal accompaniment. You know, you had chords to go along with the melody, but it's always the melody driving the the music. You know, that's the, the melody is the intention. It, it sounds like, I and mean, then the other stuff is just supporting. You know, it could be that. Could be the other way around, actually, mm -hmm. where it's really the harmony, see, and then the melody is uh, the flower of the harmony. Mm -hmm. see? Mm -hmm. It's the extension. It's the voice of the harmony. And then the harmony, the, the the feeling, see, the feeling of uh, the harmony, uh, goodness, see, being goodness. It's the harmony of being goodness itself is important. Now, uh, four people have heard my music say, no, it's crazy. Yeah, it, it, it had its level of extreme, sort of like, uh, I guess you might say, creativity and what would appear to be craziness, but when you slow it down, it's, it's more the same. Except it, this was obviously uh, not what I play, but since I have the instrument, I have the situation, it's like an opportunity to to use this wonderful instrument here to voice some of that kind of music that I was born into, but I don't ordinarily play from or about. That would be like a classical, I would say, technique. Mm -hmm. It's a simple folk technique, but maybe not as simple as some people. Certainly not as difficult as what I ordinarily play in a musical sort of concert context. Right. So melody is important. It's like your speech is important. What you say is important. So melody, in a way, is like what you're saying, what you're expressing. Mm. And then the harmony, that would be, yeah, like you said, that's more of the... The harmony is the accompaniment. Mm -hmm. okay. it, it's the situation that the melody comes through mm -hmm. in some cases. So, so some musicians play harmonies first and then they hope to hear melodies. Other musicians hear melodies first and then they hope to acquire harmonies that best represent what they're trying to express, see. Mm -hmm. Both angles, from the bottom up or from top to bottom, are valid, creative options for discovering what your melody or song can be or what your harmony and rhythm can be. Obviously, do not play this often, and so it is a little awkward for my hands, which are not designed or trained to play this kind of music easily or with facility. But what it does is it enables me to venture into what I would call the simplicity of melody. You see, that I'm always hearing song is continuous. I'm hearing it now as we speak. See? So it's something that's on and doesn't turn off because it has nothing to do with thought. See? So it's not actually a method in a way. It's not a constructed sort of, uh, what is the word, a process. See? It's more intuitively spontaneous which is part of the continuum that exists in, in this body of mind consciousness. See? And in this case, it's relative to musical form, 
and means melodies and harmonies and potentially rhythms that uh, constitute whatever the, the structures might appear to be. Then it goes back to my origin as a drummer, which is key to all of this. See? Time is key to it. Pulse is key to it. See? It's not particularly a drum pattern, but it's having a relationship to the heart of time, the time of the heart, so as to be able to allow that to manifest by itself without your self-mind involved in that. It's possible. Yeah. <clears throat> Would you have anything to say for maybe people that don't have those melody, you know, a melodic sense? Or a harmonic sense naturally? Then, then we will call it not quite just sense, but a source. Mm -hmm. So then it's coming from the melodic source of it, because each one of us is the source of melody, mm -hmm. unbeknownst to us, because we're not trained or experienced in being sourceness relative to melody or harmony or rhythm. Ordinarily, we have, we have to have a karma of training or influence or exposure to culture where that is easier to assume when you're young and growing up and you need you need that kind of shaping because of what you you're here to be as a musician perhaps See? and some people don't consider themselves musicians who have an ear for music and you know they don't, they don't take it personally and they may have an excellent ear for music and so we're talking about different dynamics that we are born into by way of the blood, the family river of blood, and we can have something coming through from our generation many lifetimes before, and we don't know. We say, oh, I don't know where that came from. Well, it came from you, your blood. It came from you. You, 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 you sang it, you played it, you feel it. It's with you, see? So it's not about time, then, it's about origin. Mm. Yeah. And we all have the potential to become masters of music to a certain degree, depending on how much we invest in whatever this particular specialty that we call mastery of music or about music is about. Okay. Could be song. Mm -hmm. And we've all, uh, by nature, inherited melodies. We've heard and we pick up, and we can say, truthfully, everyone is full of melodies. <laughs> My mother would say we were full of something else. <laughs> but we are also full of melodies. <laughs> and rhythms and song. We are full of lyrics and song as we speak. See, so each one of us has to see ourselves as a source of musical creation. We're all musicians and we're born with the potential of being musicians. So, uh, don't believe that. Know it. Mm -hmm. Whether you're playing it or not. It, m music is very meaningful to every single being here on this planet. They're all connected right, in one way or other, from somewhere or other. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. When I first met Pharaoh Sanders, Everyone knows about that, or almost everybody does. Who played with John Coltrane and those cats, great cats. And he asked me when I met him at the Vanguard, he gave me this audition at the piano in the Vanguard. The house was filling up, and he didn't care about any of that. He wanted to know, because he heard Calvin say something about me, I guess musically. And he wanted to test it for himself. So he played this grouping of harmonies, 
not quite a melody. He wanted me to put a melody on top of the harmonies. That's the, the test I had. And I heard it right away. Yeah. I didn't know it before, but I knew it on the spot, and that is what Pharaoh wanted to test. Whether I could on the spot, without a thought, without a rehearsal, just bang it out in such a way that he felt I knew what he was playing. Because, as it turned out, we were working together for umpteen years, and, you know, the music flows fast. It's fast. It comes and goes fast. you got to be up to it. you got to be ready for it. Otherwise, you, you're off. You're out. You're done. Right? Out. Out of this club. <laughs> so, this is my point. We all have it in us, but we're not all called to bring it up. Pharaoh put the demand on me on the spot in a packed house at the Vanguard. Boom, perfect place to see if I had anything in me that he was interested in. It. That could interest Pharaoh, see. That could move him to say, yeah, you're with me. And that's exactly what happened. He said, you're with me. You're playing with me. See. And I can't say I did anything. I just responded to what he asked me to respond to. So it's, part of it was unconscious, which is my point. See, what do we do as humans with our unconscious that could be productive artistically or scientifically? See. In those fields, what can we do to prove to ourselves we are fearless in such an environment? And what are we talking about? Ultimately, openness. Allowing the inner to come forth. Sometimes you have to study for years to do that. Sometimes you go home and you, you, pick, you pick up a guitar or something, an instrument, a flute, a saxophone, play the piano, and it comes out. Boom, it's there. It's already there. We have to access the always already there. See? In, in the knowledge we are born with it. We have to access it. And we want to do whatever we can to access it for those who are destined to be musicians, singers, artists in sound. Q. As musicians in the making, students or whatever, teachers, include this theory about the unconscious. Yeah. Yeah. Who is your, let's say, inner essence in a manner of speaking. See. It could be the ghost in you. It could be the fire in you. It could be the truth in you. Because what is valued is not always what we know as much as what we do with the, what, what we know consciously or know unconsciously that we can do. Okay. In these uh, tragic emergencies, you know, you hear parents lifting up a car to save their children. And before that, they may not have been able to lift up anything. Mm -hmm. But under that circumstance, which now we're talking about the unconscious coming in, there's a lot of power there to be used under certain conditions. Sometimes emergency is when you see people using that power to save themselves or others, because it's there already. Same with music. We have the unconscious ability to do more. Do we want to? And can we, if we try, to use it to make the world a better place see, by bringing out an aspect of oneself that is part of your precious sort of gift of life relative to other beings and service to others. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.